everybody, Kudo Winston here, and today I will be doing what if Deku was reborn as a slime, part 17. So, in the last part, I just covered the whole battle trial thing, or just heroes versus villains test. So, continuing the story, after the test, Deku would have noticed that Bakugo is well, missing. Him thinking, oh, where have you gone, Kachan? As he would use Ultrasonic Wave, searching the entire UA building, but not finding Bakugo. Him thinking, no, really, where did you go? As this is when the teacher, let's just say Aizawa, would throw a chalk towards Deku. With Deku dodging the chalk and with the chalk hitting the guy behind him, which I believe is Mineta. I don't know, just the guy or the girl behind Deku. Aizawa saying, Don't go spitting out Midoriya, pay attention. With Deku saying, Yes, sir. Him thinking, Well, I'll think about this when school is over. With Aizawa telling Deku to grab the chalk he threw at him. Deku thinking, wait, what chalk? Sage saying, the chalk you dodge subconsciously. Wait, what? As Deku would look back, him seeing a chalk on the ground and, well, the guy or the girl behind him very mad. Or like, no, not like very mad, just like a bit mad. With Deku apologizing and picking up the chalk, giving it back to Aizawa. Now, we will time skip to when school is over. With Deku going to, well, Bakugo's house. Him knocking on the door as Mitsuki would open the door. Deku saying, Hi, Aunt Mitsuki, I'm here to find Kachan. Oh, it's Izuku, how have you been? I'm fine, Aunt Mitsuki. Is Kachan here? Yes, he is. Give me a second. Hey, Katsuki, come down here. What do you want, old hag? Come down to the front door right now, or I'm gonna come up and get you down here. As Bakugo would come down to the front door grudgingly. Him saying, What? What do you want with me? Midoriya came here to find you, Katsuki. That shitty nerd? As Mitsuki would slap Bakugo in the face, her saying, Be more polite, Katsuki. As she would continue to, well, lecture Bakugo. And after, well, one minute, she would tell Deku that she needs to cook, well, dinner. As she would leave, with Bakugo saying, What do you want, shitty Deku? Deku saying, So, why did you skip school? I didn't skip school, shitty Deku. I quit. What? Why the hell would you quit UA? As Bakugo would slam open the door, him yelling, You think I want to leave UA? I don't. I left UA because I will not be your lackey. Him grabbing Deku by his collar, continued yelling, Ever since that time you pinned me to the ground, you have been looking down on me, haven't you, Deku? And I will never be in the same school with someone looking down on me. So remember this, Deku. I am stronger than you. And I will never, and I mean never, accept that you are stronger than me. You got that, Deku? With Deku slapping away Bakugo's hand. Him saying, Fine, you wanna fight? I'll give you a fight. Meet me at the park where we used to play when we were kids in 5 minutes. Don't be late, Kachan. As Deku would walk away. Now, 5 minutes later. Bakugo would have arrived at the park. Him yelling, Come out, Deku! As Deku would be in front of Bakugo. Him raising his hand up to Bakugo's face and saying, Paralyzing breath. Him using paralyzing breath to paralyze or knock out Bakugo. With Deku picking up Bakugo's body and whenever he did that, 
This is when a gate would open right beside Deku. Him stepping through the gate and arriving in the other world. As Deku would slam Bakugo onto the ground. Also creating a ball of healing slime and throwing it on Bakugo's face. Him saying, wake up Kachan. With Bakugo waking up, him yelling, what the, where the hell am I Deku? Kachan. Welcome to the other world. What? You're messing with me, aren't you, Deku? No, I'm not. Look around you. Do you think this is Japan? With Bakugo looking around, him yelling, What? Why the hell are we on a temple? What? Oh, sorry, wrong place. As Deku would open a gate right below Bakugo. With Bakugo falling into the gate. Deku following close behind. And whenever Deku landed, Bakugo would have yelled, What the hell was that, Deku? Just look to your right, Kachan. What? As he would look to the right. Him seeing, well, the sunrise. Deku saying, It's nice, isn't it? What? I mean, the sunrise is peaceful, right? Yes, it is. So, have you calmed down yet? I have. Then do you still think this is Japan? No, I don't. So where are we, Deku? Tell me the truth. I already told you the truth, Kachan. We are in the other world. No, you are still lying to me, Deku. You don't possess the power to transfer others and yourself to another world. So tell me the truth, Deku. Where are we? Yeah, about that, let me show you. Him grabbing Bakugo by his shoulder and using fog communication to, well, show him what he has been through in the other world, excluding the demon part. You know, the demon that the first or the orc leader ate. And also, the story of the holy war, including Belakor. Bakugo stumbling back as he would say, what, what did you do to me, Deku? I didn't do anything to you, Kachan. I just show you what I did in this world. Or what I've been through. So, you own a village? Yes, I do. And you didn't tell me about it? Well, you wouldn't believe me even if I told you, Kachan. So why did you bring me here, Deku? I brought you here to fight. What? Can't we just fight in that park? Well, the thing is, in our world, there are laws not letting us to use our quirks. However, in this world, we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, and wherever we want. Well, except cities, countries, and even villages. But outside of that, anywhere. So you brought me here in this world so I can go all out? Yes, but also I am here to show you the difference in our powers. Sure, sure, whatever you say, Deku. As explosions would appear in Bakugo's hand or palm. Him rushing in to attack Deku. But Deku would just stand there, not even flinching, as Bakugo would continue to throw more and more explosions, until his hands start to, well, get hurt, or feel pain. Him continue to explode Deku, but he will stop whenever he is, well, out of stamina. Deku saying, so are you done yet? W what? After all those attacks, how are you still standing? Do you want a second chance, Kachan? Wh what? As Deku would create another ball of slime, or healing slime, or just high quality potions. Him throwing it at Bakugo, and healing his wounds or hands, and giving him back his stamina. 
as Bakugo would go rushing in towards Deku again, throwing barrages of explosions at Deku, with Deku still just standing there not even flinching, as Bakugo would punch at Deku, him not even, well, hitting Deku, only hitting something in front of Deku, him being confused, saying, what is this Deku? Oh this? This is just my wind barrier. What? What? Since when can you do that? Kachan, my skill is called air manipulation. I can literally manipulate air. So of course I can make something as easy as a barrier. Err, uh, die Deku! As Bakugo would run in, throwing more and more explosions. And after, let's say, another minute, Bakugo would have been exhausted, him lying on the ground, with Deku creating another ball of healing slime, or just high quality potion, him throwing it on Bakugo's face and healing him, as Bakugo would get up, him saying, So is that it? You wanna show me your control over air? No, I don't. I just wanted to show you this. But before that, we need to go to another place. Where? Just follow me, Kachan. Deku opening a portal. Or just using gate. Him and Bakugo going through. And arriving at, well, a place where Veldora told Deku that he could train all out without anybody noticing or even sensing that he is there, with Bakugo being shocked to see all of the destruction there. Him seeing what happened to this place. Oh, this place? Well, I happened. What? What do you mean you happened? I came to this place to train and you can see what happened. I kind of destroyed the entire landscape. What? You're lying. You're not that strong. Oh really? As Deku would hold up his right hand, using 50% of black lightning to fire a gigantic blast. With Bakugo being, well, speechless, Deku seeing, and that is only 50%. As Bakugo would realize that he can never defeat Deku, him starting to tear up a bit, since his pride or his arrogance was just crushed by Deku, him yelling desperately, Why? Why can't I defeat you, Deku? Why? Deku is saying, Hey Kachan, do you remember when you told me that maybe I'll get a quirk in my next life? Yeah, what about it? Well, it looks like you were right. What? What do you mean? Now this is the part that I didn't told you about. As Deku would use fog communication to show Bakugo how he got reborn into the other world. Bakugo being confused, asking, S So you died and got reborn? Yes, I did. So I just have to die to get stronger, eh? Wait, what are you thinking? As Bakugo would run over to the side and grabbing a sharp piece of stone. Him trying to use it to, well, let's just say suicide. Deku immediately realizing what he's about to do as he would use steel thread to stop what he's doing. Him yelling, are you stupid? You are doing suicide, you know that? Of course I know that, Deku. But if it means that I'm going to be stronger than you, I will. <sighs> Why are you such an idiot? You know there's another way, right? What? I didn't become this strong because I got reborn into this world. I became this strong because I trained. Unlike you, you were never even trained. Not once in your lifetime. As Deku would pull Bakugo, well, towards him, while releasing Bakugo, him grabbing Bakugo by the shoulder, saying, 
I know this sounds weird, but we're going to my village. And I am, well, going to train you there. As Deku would open a portal right next to him, with Bakugo and Deku walking through. Them arriving right in front of the gate of the city? No, the town. Now, Deku and Bakugo would have walked into the entrance, and this time, instead of a human soldier, it is an orc. Well, a high orc to be exact. It, well, him asking for Deku's identification, with Deku handing his identification over. The orc being shocked. Him saying, Lord Rimuru? Yes, that's me. As the orc would yell that Rimuru Tempest is back in town, with all of the orcs rushing to the gate to welcome Deku. Deku thinking, oh yeah, Kachan. As he would look back, seeing that Bakugo is about to pick a fight with the high orc, with the high orc demanding Bakugo's well, identification. And since this is the first time Bakugo is in this world, he does not have any. With Bakugo panicking as he would try to threaten the High Orc. But whenever, or should I say, but just when Bakugo is about to, well, throw an explosion right towards the High Orc, this is when Deku would have stopped both of them. Him telling the High Orc that Bakugo is with him, as the High Orc would believe Deku because he's Rimuru Tempest, and letting Bakugo through the gate. And this is when Deku would tell Bakugo that he should be, well, more polite, because everyone in this world, well, except for most of the humans, they are stronger than Bakugo, because... The living creatures in this world has, well, have a skill or unique skill and magic, but Bakugo only have one quirk. So, yeah. Now, this is when Deku would have took Bakugo to a blacksmith, to be exact, Kaido's blacksmith, as they would arrive. Kaido being surprised to see Deku being back in the town. Deku saying, Hi Kaido, long time no see. I'm here to give this guy his identifications and maybe check his magic attribute as well. Oh, yes, sure, right away. As Kaido would do the procedure of making Bakugo's identification, him checking Bakugo's level. And let's just say that Bakugo is level 30. As Kaido would have been finished doing, or should I say making, Bakugo's identification. And this is when Kaido would grab, well, the device that lets you check others' magic attribute. Him telling Bakugo to put his hand on the device. With Kaido telling Deku and Bakugo that he has a fire attribute. Deku thinking, Huh, so even though he does not have any magic, he still have a magic attribute. This is interesting. But Bakugo would have been confused, him asking Deku, Wait, what do you mean magic attribute? Are you saying that I can use magic? But just as Deku was about to explain, Kaido would have said that, Even though Bakugo has a magic attribute, he does not seem to possess any magic, or magic energy. Bakugo looking at Deku saying, what does he mean? It means that you have the ability to use fire, but you just don't have the power to use that. Kaido pulling Deku aside asking, Lord Rimuru, this is very odd. I've never seen someone that has a magic attribute but doesn't have any magic. Do you know why? Deku saying, Actually, I do. You see, he is not from this world. Wait, are you saying he's an otherworlder? Yes, to be exact, 
from my world. As this is when Deku would have come up an idea, him telling Kaido about it, with Kaido being very intrigued and saying, sure, I'll do my best to make that. Bakugo saying, hey, what are you guys talking about there? Don't ignore me, Deku. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to be so impatient, Kachan. As he would take Bakugo's identification and, well, eat it. Him saying that it is for safekeeping. Them leaving the blacksmith. But before Deku left, he would have turned back, telling Kaido, Don't worry, you have a lot of time in your hand, so don't rush it. Kaido saying, Yes, of course, Lord Rimuru. As Deku would have opened another portal. Them both walking in as they would be in front of a dojo. Deku saying, Welcome to the dojo, Kachan. Okay, what am I doing here again? You are going to be training here with one of my acquaintance. What? Who? As Benimaru would walk up to Deku and, well, bow down. Him saying, Lord Rimuru, welcome back. Uh, Benimaru, you don't need to be that formal. Oh, yes, Lord Rimuru. So, may I ask what are you doing here? Sure, I'm here to train one of my friends. Oh, is this your friend? Yes. What style does he use to fight with Lord Rimuru? Uh, good question. I don't think I know what style he used. Okay, then how about his magic attribute? Does he have any magic attribute or even know how to use magic? Well, he has a fire attribute, but he doesn't have any magic to use it. However, he does have a, well, skill. It's called explosions. He can throw explosions with his hand. Yes, Lord Rimuru, I'll see what I can do. As Hakuro, the kaijin that is, well, old, would have walked up to Deku. Him saying, ah, Lord Rimuru, long time no see, how have you been? Hakuro, nice to see you again. I'm fine. How about you? I see that you are very energetic. Ha ha ha, of course I am Lord Rimuru. I am always happy to see you again, since it has been 55 years. Wait, it has been that long? Yes, it has. So, what brings you here, Lord Rimuru? Oh, I came back to see if you guys can help me train my friend over here. Oh, no problem, we will see what we can do. As Hakuro would ask Benimaru if he knows what kind of style Bakugo used to fight. With Benimaru telling Hakuro that Bakugo, well, let's just say that Bakugo doesn't use any styles of fighting. But Benimaru did tell Hakuro that Bakugo can use explosions with his hands. With Hakuro thinking for a bit, as he would tell Deku that Bakugo's training will start in 5 minutes. With Deku turning towards Bakugo saying, Be ready, Kachan. I'm always ready, Deku. No, I mean, be ready to feel like hell when you start training. What? What do you mean? You will understand when you try it. <sighs> anyway, how long are we going to stay in this world? I don't know, maybe about 8 days? What? 8 days? And you said we shouldn't skip school. Remember Kachan, 4 days in this world is only 1 hour in hours. So 8 days in this world is 2 hours in our world. Oh. Now 5 minutes would have passed by as Bakugo's training would begin. Him immediately understand what Deku meant by him feeling hell because his training is so intense that he is feeling like he's going to die. With Deku sitting on the sidelines watching Bakugo training, him, well, having a smile, thinking, well, this is kind of entertaining. 
Now, this will be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. That would be amazing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!